Okay, this is the review for chapter four on uh, fractions, decimals, and percents. There are 19 or 20 questions. You have 20 questions? 20 questions on your sheet. Follow along as we go through. It says, what percent does this picture represent? Well, right here, there are 100 blocks, which means this is representing a percentage. So however many are shaded in is a percentage. So in this particular case, there are five and in 12 hundredths of 100 shaded in, right? Because there are five, one, two, three, four, five full blocks and 12 hundredths here, or five and 12 hundredths, which is 5.12%. If I asked you to re express that as a decimal, not in lowest terms, or sorry, as a decimal, not, not a fraction, not as a percent, but a decimal, who has a strategy they would have used to change that to a decimal? What would you do? You would take this fraction over 100 and multiply it by what? 100. How come? You want to move it two places, you get 512 over 10,000, which is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Oh, I have one extra two zero. One zero too many. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, five hundred and twelve ten thousandths. But the answer is five point one two percent. Question two, what picture does this represent or at what percent? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and a th and two thirds unshaded, which means we have uh, what did I say it was? 76 and a third. Is that right? 76 and a third square shaded, which, oh, did I add them up wrong? Does everyone have that answer? So 76 and a third is how many are shaded in. Therefore, it's 76 and a third percent. You could have also said 76 decimal three repeating. Both answers are correct. I probably would prefer this. Um, because I don't like repeating decimals, and calculators don't like them either. So 76 and a third percent. Is it? And a third? Are you sure? Okay, you and I will talk about it after. It's 76 and a third. Question three says, what decimal does this picture represent? Well, since there are no full squares here, it is less than 1%. We know that for sure because there's not even a square. And the one that is shaded in is only a quarter. So it's really a quarter of a percent. Or a quarter of a percent. Now keep in mind that these two numbers here are not the same thing. This is 25%, and this is a quarter of a percent. Right? They are not equal to each other. Right? Keep that in mind as you think about this question. Question four, what fraction does this picture represent? Well, we have 19% for sure, and inside that one is a half, so it's 19.5%, which has a fraction, or as another percent could be this, which has a fraction is 19.5 out of 100, which is 195 equivalent to 195 thousandths, which brings us to our last, which our answer is that 195 thousandths. In lowest terms, both are divisible by 5. What's 195 divided by 5? Anybody? 39? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? 195 divided by 5 is 39. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Over 200. So what fraction does this represent? How many of you had this for an answer? 195 thousandths. How many reduced to the lowest terms? You got 39 two hundredths. Am I wrong? Did anyone else have a different answer? What did you guys have for answers? Okay, so most of you had this one, right? It's not wrong. It's right. Did anyone reduce to 39 two hundredths? Anybody in this room? Now, one person reduced 195 thousandths down to 39 two hundredths. Really? Okay, well, that's the answer for that question. Question four, what is 0.2% as a fraction in lowest terms? Well, 0.2% as a fraction 
square. Yeah, I know the, the numbers are off. So we'll just from now on every number is one more. So as a bad fraction, we would say it's 0 0.2 out of 100, 0 0.2 percent. As a good fraction, equivalent fraction that is, we would multiply it to get two out of a thousand, which we can now read as two thousandths. Do I need that anymore? No, it's a fraction, sorry. So as a good fraction, it's that. If I divide both by two, I get one over 500 as a fraction in lowest terms. Did anyone get that one? One at 500. Did anyone have a different answer? Colin, would you have? Correct, one five hundredth. Well done. Next question. What is zero decimal zero four five as a percent? The first thing you need to be able to do is read it. What number is that? What is it, Clark? What number is this here? Don't say zero decimal zero four five. Forty five one thousandths is hundred percent correct. So as a fraction it's that. And in order to get it as a percent. We need it as an equivalent fraction out of 100. So in this case, I would divide by 10, and I would get 4.5 out of 100, which represents 4.5%. Question 7, what is 8% as a fraction in lowest terms? Well, 8% would be 8 out of 100, which if I divide by 2 gets me 4 out of 50, excuse me, not 25, 4 out of 50, which is still not lowest terms, which is 2 out of 25. So your answer is 2 out of 25 is 8% as a fraction in lowest terms. Question 8, what is decimal 6 as a percent? Uh, Clark, we'll go to you again. What number is that? 6 what? Try again. Six tenths is correct, which is equal to sixty hundredths because you multiply by ten, which is equal to sixty percent. So the answer for question eight is sixty percent. Question nine: Jimmy gets commission on cars he sells. If Jif Jimmy gets four and three quarter percent commission, how much will he would make if he sells a car worth twenty four thousand dollars? So first of all, commission is a profit you make. So he gets just a little bit less than five percent. So since I know 10%, if I covered up the zero, I would know the 10% commission would be 2,400, and therefore 5% commission would be half of that, or 1,200. So a good estimation is about $1,200 commission, right? If I wanted to estimate it first, right? Oh, that's not what I wanted to hit. Oh, booger. Oh, that's not where I am. There we go. I'll just erase it by hand. Okay. So four and three quarter percent, the first thing I want to do is I want to reimagine that without a fraction. So four and three quarters percent is four decimal seven five percent, still less than five percent. I want to then think of it as being a fraction. So 4.75 percent is 4.75 out of 100. I have a decimal in my numerator, which I can't have to interpret as a decimal. If I multiply it by 100, I'm going to move my decimal twice to get 475. I also have to multiply this by 100. I get 10,000. So 475 ten thousandths is 0, 4, 7, 5 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So 4 and 3 quarters percent as a decimal is this. So 4 and 3 quarter percent of 24,000 is decimal 0, 4, 7, 5 times, oh, that's not the right number, 24,000 is 1140. So my estimation before, remember I said 5% would be 1200. The actual commission Jimmy will make is $1,140. So if you ever work on commission, if you ever hear about jobs that work on commission, if you make four and three quarter percent selling something, that's 24,000, you make 1140. If you're in real estate, which is a very lucrative business, and you're reading comic books, which are not a good lucrative business, then you make a lot more. Like real estate agents can make like four to five percent, but they're selling things that are much more expensive than uh, a car that's twenty-four thousand. If they're selling a home that's two hundred and forty thousand, the profit they would make, the commission they would make on selling a house 
could be as much as 11,000 or 12,000 or sometimes even crazier like 200, uh, 20,000 or 25,000 for selling one house, right? And if you sell 10 houses a year, you could make a lot of money, right? So for those of you who are thinking of a career opportunity, things with commission can be lucrative if you're good at selling. Question 10 says, Willard, what a lovely name, borrows $200 from his daughter Maddie, what an equally lovely name, at a weekly interest rate of 12.5%. How much interest is there after just one week? So 12.5%, so if it's $200, I want to figure what is 12.5% of $200. 12.5% is 0 to 125 times 200. So if I go decimal 125 times the $200 I owe Maddie, I would owe $25 in interest. So if I wanted to pay off my loan to my daughter or Maddie, whoever that happens to be, I would have to pay her at the end of one week $225 for the 200 loan that I borrowed. $200 loan that I borrowed. The interest is 25 bucks, so I'd have to pay her back a full 225 bucks after one week. Question 11. Oh, if the interest on Willard's loan goes unpaid for three weeks, how much will, in total, Willard pay at the end of three weeks in principal, what he borrowed, and interest? So this is a variation. So again, 12.5% of the $200 in the first week does anyone remember how I changed this to be both interest and principal in one step? We did it with the last question with the uh, in the last formative Friday quest. Instead of multiplying it by 0 0.125, if I multiply it by 1.125, that will give me the $200, that will give me the interest, and both 1.125 is both combined. So if I multiply these, I should get this number right here. So if I take my calculator and go 1.125 times 200 is 225. So that's what I had to pay her at the first week. But if I don't pay it, then Maddie then says, don't worry about it, I'll pay it off you. I'll give you another loan for $225. I'll loan you the 225, but that's going to be charged at 12.5% on that as well. So the second week, this is week two, or this is week one, this is week two, it's 1.125 multiplied by 225. Take my calculator, 1.125, so that's the interest and principal, multiplied by 225. At the end of week two, I owe Maddie $253.13, roughly, right? And if I don't pay it off on the second week, Maddie says, don't worry about it, I'll pay it off for you. You just owe me 12.5% of that new loan, which if I multiply that by, I'm actually going to keep it 1, 2, 5. I'm going to keep it like that. Multiply it by 1 decimal 1, 2, 5. At the end of that third week, I have to pay Maddie $284.77. Well, if, if you rounded this to here, if you rounded it in that second step, you would have got a different answer. But if you didn't round it, and you kept it as 12 and a half cents, you would have got this answer. How many had that answer, just out of curiosity? Anybody? Anyone have a different answer? 76 cents? Did anyone get it wrong completely? Most of you? Okay. We'll practice another one of those later. Those are tough questions. Uh, question 11. Jack invested $400 in Microsoft. After three weeks, the stocks rose 120% in the original value. So what is the new value of Jack's stocks? So we're looking for 120% of the $400. So it's not weekly, it's just overall. So 120% is 120 over 100, which is 1 and 20 hundredths, which is 1 and 2 tenths, which is 1.2. So 1.2 multiplied by 400, if I take my calculator out, 120% of $400 is $480. So if it rises 120% uh, over the original value, the new value would be uh, $480.
Now, sorry, rows to 120% of the value, not 20%. It's the same thing as uh, 20% increase because 100% of the original value would have been $400, right? But 120% would be that. Question 12, uh, uh oh, grammatical error. A $80 pair of pants is on sale on loudmouth.com for 20% off. After two weeks, they reduced the sale price a further 15%. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, two ways we can do it. So what is 20% of $80? Well, 10% would be 8 bucks. So 20% would be double that, would be $16. So therefore, take the $80 pair of pants, subtract the discount of $16, and we get 64 bucks. So after uh, the first discount, the price is now $64. But then they say, okay, they're not selling, so we're going to further reduce this $64 by 15%. So a 15% discount off the $64, the discount is $9.60. So what we're going to do is going to take that $64 and subtract $9.60. That's going to be... Uh, $54.40. So the answer is $54.40. Okay. Question 14. Is it going to ring? Okay, I'm going to press pause for a second here. Okay, the bell's gone. Students are gone. Just me now. Uh, question 14 says a $40 item is charged a tariff of 15. So a tariff is like a tax. Same idea as a tax, right? But it's just a, a different one. So then new price is taxed again at 15%. So what is the final price? So before we were calculating, I could calculate the tariff. So 25% of $40. We know it's half of half. Since 50% would be 20, 25% would be $10. I could take my $40 and add on 10. So after the tariff is imposed, the final cost would be 50. But I like to think of it this way. If you're paying a tariff of 25%, you will have not only multiplying by one, but 100% is the cost of the $40 item. And 25%, so this is the item, this is the tariff. If I multiply it by 1.25, that's both the item itself and the tax. So multiply that by 40. When I do that with a calculator, I still get $50. So after that tariff is imposed, you get a new price of 50 bucks. And then that $50 is going to be taxed at a rate of 15%. So 15% of $50. Well, 10% is 5. 5% would be half of that, which would be 250. So 15% would be 750. Add it on to the $50. Your final price would be 5750. That's the answer. But if I'm saying, okay, if I take 15%, again, same way over here, 1.15 is the, the price of the item plus an additional 15% tax. That's what this 1.15 means. Of the $50, not the 40, because it's taxed on the tariff price, if it took a calculator, and go 1.15 multiplied by the $50 item, you get $57.50, which is your answer still. Either way is fine. The mental math... I would rather you did it like this. That would be the preferred method of getting your answer. Uh, but either way, you get $57.50 as your answer. Question 15 says, Michelle wrote a social studies test and got 46.25%. Okay, so 46.25. So she got 46.25%. Okay. So it says, use proportional reasoning. If the test was out of 80... How many questions did she get right? So if the question, so how many questions out of 80 did she get right if she got 46.25 out of 100? So using proportional raising, this is how you should set it up. And we remember before that to create that algebraic equation that can solve proportional raising, you can multiply across the equal sign with your variable. Multiply this way. Let's get my calculator. So 46.25 multiplied by 80 is 3,700. Divide by 100 to isolate. 
you get x equals 37. So she got 37 questions right out of 80. Question 15 is true, false. A quarter percent is equal to decimal 25. Well, this is false because a quarter percent is less than 1%. And 0 decimal 25, everybody knows, is 25%. And less than 1% is not equal to 25%. So therefore, the answer is false. Question 16, 0.2% is less than 1. Well, 0.2%, 0.2% is less than 1%. It's less than 1%. And 1 is really... 100%, right? Because 1 is... So is 1% less than 100%? Of course it is. So the answer is true. Half of half of half is 12.5%. Remember, half of half... Well, there is half. So half of half is half of this. So I'm going to divide that by 2. I get 25%. And then if I divide that by 2, half of half of half, half of half is 25%, and half of half of half is 12.5%, which is half of that. Well, that makes it true. It's true. Question 19, if you get one-tenth of a percent annual interest from your savings account, which is less than 1%, uh, a balance of $100 will be worth $100.10 after one year. So let's take this number here. Let's figure out what is this value. So a tenth of a percent could be also written like this. Those are the same thing, a tenth of a percent, which is equal to a tenth of a percent, which is equal to, excuse me, that zero shouldn't be there, as an equivalent fraction, one thousandth, which as, an, as a decimal is this. So keeping in mind that this is a tenth of a percent, this is a tenth of a percent, this is a tenth of a percent. This is a fraction that's equal to a tenth of a percent. And this is this fraction reinterpreted as a decimal. A tenth of a percent is zero decimal zero zero one. So a tenth of a percent of a hundred bucks. Take my calculator out. A tenth of a percent of a hundred dollars is ten cents. Or zero decimal one. So if that was the interest on $100, I would have the $100 principal plus the interest. Therefore, the answer is true. And your last question, question 20. 10% of $60 is more than 13.5% of $50. So 10% of $60 is a mental math question. We all know that that's $6 because we move our decimal one place to get 10%. But 13.5% is a little bit more tricky. So as a fraction, it's this. As an equivalent fraction, it's this. And as a decimal, it's that. So 13.5% as a decimal is this. So 13.5% of 50. Take my calculator. 13.5% of $50 is $6.75. So is this more money than this? No, this is more money. Therefore, the answer is false. Hopefully you got some of those right. I know it's tricky. This is the hardest unit that we do in grade eight. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns and you want to further do some more questions with me, just let me know and I can do another sheet up for everybody.